Good morning. It's Monday, October 11th, and that means two things. It's Canadian Thanksgiving, a day that you can participate in just by sending your favorite Canadian 20 bucks. And it's time for the Lighting Industry News Brief brought to you by KeystoneTech.com. And I dig these. I dig these. These are direct drive LED HID replacements. Now these come in 80 and 115 watts and on them, two little switches. One lets you pick your power, one lets you pick your color. Keeps your SKUs low, keeps your versatility high, and they've got a G2 screw in for their smart port, so you can offer motion sensing, daylight harvesting that's light, made, easy, keystonetech.com. Into the news, GE Current, comma, a Dane Tree Company, plans a price increase. Uh, traditional lamps and ballasts will be 30% more expensive as of the 3rd of January. Cooper is raising prices as of the 8th, that's across all lines. Signify is raising prices as of November 1st, all portfolios there as well. Amerlex will be raising prices as of the 1st, all lines 8%. Uh, container ships are piling up in China as well with 150 we vessels, vessels <laughs> waiting in Shanghai. Uh, Ico has bought Premise LED. This is a Canadian manufacturer bought for an undisclosed amount. Uh, Skyview Capital, that's a PE firm, has bought Digital Lumens and Ancilium from Osram. Rexpol, Rexel has bought Mayer, that's 68 branches in 12 states. Acuity will be issuing their Q4 results. Uh, their sales are up 11% over same quarter last year. True Value and GE Lighting, comma, a savant company, have uh, will be going exclusive in the hardware channel. On Get a Grip on Lighting, you can hear Dan Blitzer talk about how you cannot really get light just by reading a diagram. Uh, Leviton is expanding its partnership with Homesphere. This is a Ruby management platform. Uh, Cree Complete has... Sorry. Cree has completely transformed into Wolf Speed. Uh, this is, of course, the company that used to own uh, Cree Lighting and now is specifically focused on semiconductors with a new facility in... Uh, New York State uh, efficiency is still the top clean energy job. This is a survey from the EESI. Uh, Lynx has bought outdoor living brands. This deal includes outdoor lighting perspective. In legal news, Lighton has filed a suit against SETI. This is a UV LED patent related case. Uh, also in UV related patents, Nitride Semiconductors has secured IP rights for a micro UV LED. Uh, in horticultural news, Irrigation Association launches a new magazine. This is Irrigation Lighting, going to print in the spring. Uh, we've got a comparison of nine LEDs and HIDs and sunlight from Cornell and Rutgers to weigh through. And tomatoes and cucumbers actually benefit from 24-hour lighting, so consider that uh, next time you grow any of those. In event news, Legeducation is calling for speakers next year, deadline set for the end of the month. October is Energy Awareness Month. Uh, every month is Energy Awareness Month, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, webinar on the 18th of November, we have Understanding IoT Connected Lighting, presented by the IES. You can watch an on-demand version of the SCCC's presentation on smart cities. And we have a nice recap from the Arclight Summit, written from a number of attendees. In rep agency news, we have Zycato partnering with Hustley. And Inside Lighting is recapping 54 rep deals recently. Uh, go again, nail.org. You can read all these links that I'm talking about right now. In recommended reading, we have a case study retrofitting a shopping center in Quebec and an interview with Oro's Patrick Gall in market projections. Luminaires will grow by 1.4%. Street lighting will expand by 2.5%. Quantum dot lighting will be worth $10 billion in value in the near future. Home automation will gain 5% in value in 2025. Uh, Bluetooth LEDs will reach nearly 300 million by 2027, and table lamps will be worth 113 billion by 2025. In IoT news, Siemens has bought WattSense. They're a French IoT stock. Right up, WirePass is pushing for non-cellular 5G approval. They're a Finnish software company that considers it a better alternative to Bluetooth Mesh, and Talensa is showing off Talc in Georgia. That's a smart city management tool. In R&D, we've got a QLED that is as thin as paper, like three micrometers thick, demonstrated by Seoul National U. In Dark Sky News, Stacey Park Olivet 
Missouri is an urban sky urban night sky place, as is Fry Family Park in Magnolia. And Hayes County has declared Night Skies Month. On the 20th of October, you can attend a webinar presented by Prof. Dwayne Haymaker about astronomical heritage. In local news, Montgomery County is offering bulb trade-ins. Eugene, Oregon is uh, replacing their globe lights downtown. Schneider Electric has opened a smart factory in Wales. And rent glowing kayaks on the Saskatchewan River. Watch out for pirates. And in People News, we have Light Efficient Design appointing Doug Nebelsberger as Senior VP of Sales and Marketing. Congrats to him. In Things You Can Make, you can have a nurse lamp that can also peel potatoes, a laser theremin to go with that laser harp, and a LED matrix hourglass that really works, simulating sand. That's been me. I've been Scott Walker. Thank you to Nailed. Thank you to Keystone. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the music. Enjoy your week.